E já preparamos a próxima palestra. E para moderar a próxima palestra, o próximo painel, convidamos o excelentíssimo senhor ex-ministro da Agricultura e o grande idealizador da Embrapa, laureado do World Food Prize, senhor Alisson Paulinelli. Pedimos aos senhores que ocupem seus lugares, por gentileza, para o próximo painel. Senhoras e senhores, por gentileza, pedimos que ocupem os seus lugares, acomodem-se. Daremos início ao nosso próximo painel. Já recebemos no palco o ex-ministro da Agricultura, grande idealizador da Embrapa, senhor Alisson Paulinelli, que será o moderador do próximo painel. Senhor Alisson Paulinelli será o moderador do próximo painel. Para proferir a palestra, convidamos a senhora Pamela Johnson, ex-presidente da Associação dos Produtores de Milho dos Estados Unidos da América e atual diretora da Maisal. Informamos aos senhores que esse painel terá duração de 20 minutos. Os participantes poderão enviar suas perguntas através dos cartões que se encontram no material do fórum e que poderão ser entregues às recepcionistas. Poderão fazer também os questionamentos oralmente, usando os microfones disponíveis no auditório. Os participantes que acompanham o evento via sinal de satélite Full HD ou via internet, também poderão enviar suas perguntas através do aplicativo GAF16, disponível nas plataformas iOS e Android. Solicitamos a todos que enviarem perguntas que, por gentileza, identifiquem-se. Senhoras e senhores, com a palavra, a senhora Pamela Johnson. to thank the leadership of the Global Agribusiness Forum, including Abramilio, for the chance to be here. And many thanks to my colleague and dear friend, Sergio Bortolozzo, for inviting me to give the opening speech to this distinguished audience. We all look forward today to the very talented list of speakers who will provide strong contributions to the theme of your forum. Agriculture of Tomorrow, Doing More with Less, Disseminating the Foundation of Sustainable Development. In keeping with that theme, I would like to provide some thoughts about how agriculture needs to be positioned in the future to meet the global food security challenge 
of feeding 9 billion people on a sustainable basis. This is not just a, a challenge for production agriculture, but for the full value chain. It will take innovation and creativity. It will require vastly improved cooperation between governments and with public and private sectors. It will require coordination and communication, particularly to those hungry global consumers around the world. And finally, it will require global forums such as this that will illuminate these challenges, identify solutions, and call us all to action. The need is before us. We are all called to change the dynamics, to bring forth a desirable future that can provide economic sustainability rather than a predictable future of unmet challenges and continued struggles. I'm a farmer from Iowa, and I'm past president of the National Corn Growers Association, which represents over 44,000 members across 28 states. Currently, I serve as the second vice president of MAZAL, the International Maize Alliance, and I'm appointed by the U.S. Secretary of Agriculture, Tom Vilsack, to serve on the Foundation for Food and Ag Research Board. My husband and I have been farming for 43 years. We grow corn and soybeans, and we are both six generations. Our families have been farmers for six generations. I want to share a brief history about our family farm. This is what corn harvest looked like in 1914, when my grandparents were young farmers. At that time, most of the crop went to feed the immediate family, the horses, cows, chickens, with very left, little left over for sale. In the 1940s, our grandparents and parents farmed with tractors, not horses, and produced more with better seeds. This is my husband and I harvesting corn. Farming is not just something we do, it is who we are. We are very blessed with good soils, adequate rainfall, the knowledge and skills passed down through the generations. Grand as it sounds, that alone is not enough to, succeed, to achieve success and continuous improvement. We build on that tradition with the ability to make progress on the farm with access to new research and technology, an effective, efficient transfer of science-based knowledge and technology brought back to the farmer is the lifeblood that keeps us in business. Innovation brings opportunity, more productivity, and better farming methods. Without innovation, farmers are dead in the water. We are not just standing still, we are moving backwards. Leaving the land in better shape, leaving the earth in better shape, is not just a cliche for us. It is a lived experience driven by the vision for the future of our sons, their wives, and three little grandsons who work with us. As with other farmers around the world, we think about the next generation. And we are driven by the challenge and the responsibility to provide what 9.7 billion people by 2050 around the world will need for food, feed, and energy. That is why this forum and the themes are so relevant for all of us. We are called to the future. We are asked not just to attend, to listen, to learn, to network, but beyond this week, we are all called to action. We are called to discuss and find solutions for the challenges facing humanity in order to promote economic and social development and preserve the environment, to ensure a secure future for the world agriculture chain, to promote a serious result-driven debate we are asked to join this movement and help to sow a new tomorrow. This is a call to action. 
So the agriculture of tomorrow, what will it look like? Will it be a predictable future laden with the same challenges that we face today? Push back on science and technology, the lack of access to innovation, research and development for farmers and industry. Will there be growing challenges for market access and growing global conflicts over food security? Challenges to achieve a sustainable production and fragmented ag and rural economies. What can we do as the entire food and value chain to address some of these challenges so that we can have a desirable future? One that includes acceptance of science-based regulatory systems, widespread adoption of modern farming practices, confidence in global markets, consumer trust and understanding, global food security, and sustainable food production systems. Can we as the value chain fill in those gaps to realize a desirable future? What are some of the things that need to be done? We need to support our governments to use consistent and timely science-based procedures in regulating modern farming practices and technologies. We have to ensure that we have access to the new technologies that evolve, the plant breeding, the new gene editing, along with transgenics and GMOs. We have to communicate the benefits of these modern farming practices not only to consumers, but to society as a whole, so that we can overcome the mistrust or lack of trust in the safety and quality of food. We need to talk with our consumers in both develop and developed and developing countries about the benefits of biotechnology and modern farming practices, in addition to those traditional farming methods to meet the challenge of the global challenge the global future demand and the food security around the world. We need to convince our customers that we will be consistent, reliable suppliers and that they can be, they can be self-sustaining without needing to be self-sufficient. We have to create the political and the economic environment that allows the agriculture value chain to continue to be creative and innovative so that we can achieve food security and economic sustainability. What actions do we need to all of us take as the entire value chain to meet those challenges? We must reposition ourselves to determine our own destiny, or we will continue down a more predictable path that is filled with uncertainty and apprehension. Maisal is one alliance who is working to fill in the gap to a better agriculture of tomorrow. Who is Maisal? We are a partnership of four associations in three countries. We represent the major maize exporters of the Americas. We represent the majority of the world's exportable corn surplus. Maisal's members are and will remain competitors. Maisal's members, however, we are all exporters. We face common trade barriers. We face common challenges on biotechnology. I would like to ask the Maisal members from Brazil who are here today to stand, please, to be recognized. And all Mais Maisal members, please, please stand or raise your hand. Thank you. <laughs> Maisal was formally launched three years ago in Buenos Aires, bringing together the US, Argentina, and Brazil Corn Alliance into reality. At that time, I was the National Corn Grower President, and I said, Maisal is a farmer-to-farmer -farmer alliance, and in every instance, we have had a meeting of the minds about the key challenges that we face together in opening markets. Farmers speaking with a united voice across the three corn exporting 
countries can have a significant positive influence on the debate. That is our goal, and we are one step closer today. My colleague, Julia Schaff, who will speak this afternoon, was the United States Grains Council vice chairman at that time. And he said, we are competitors, and we will remain competitors, but we grow the same crop, we serve the same customers, and we face the same problems on market access issues. We have a common interest in working together to open markets, to improve food security around the world. That is the goal of Maisal, and that is still our goal today. We believe that Maisal can serve as a template to develop a desirable future that meets the challenges of food security and at the same time provides economic stability and environmental sustainability, conserving land and water resources. As producers, we share an opportunity, a responsibility, and a challenge. We grow corn, we sell corn, and our market is the world. Our market is growing. We all know the grand challenge that is before us. To feed a growing population, we must produce more food in the next 50 years than has been produced in the last 10,000 years combined. The growing global middle class, they are growing very quickly. People all around the world will look to improve their diets as they have more disposable income. This is the major driver of increased food demand. And as farmers, we see this as an opportunity, but we also see it as a challenge because we know as farmers that land and water are limited. It is clear that farmers around the world will be challenged to grow more with less. And this must be done on a sustainable basis. As farmers, we are confident that we can do this job but to succeed, we must embrace technology. We must reduce waste. We need access to all the tools, research, and development to bring and to provide important environmental as well as production benefits. We must create a global trading system that allows food to move freely and efficiently from areas of surplus to areas that have need, and those change every year. We urge liberalization of trade. We recognize that openness to trade depends on confidence in the global trading system and that confidence in the capacity of producers to meet the demand. We face challenges in several important import markets, together we do, in the European Union, China, and South Korea. Maisal has met with government officials and our import customers in all of these countries to raise our concerns. We all need access to more technology and more tools. As farmers, the continued access to affordable and involving technology is crucial. Our technology is evolving in all areas. We use GPS navigation to plant our seeds and apply inputs with high precision. With precision planting, we can plant the right seed in the right place at the right time in the right population for specific soil conditions. Biotechnology gives us access to premium hybrid seeds and optimized performance such as insect resistance, herbicide resistance, and drought tolerance. With better seeds and better farming practices, we continue to increase our plant populations and will continue to do so. We monitor our fields very closely. We map each field and use the data to maximize yield potential. Many factors are measured and mapped in detail as our equipment moves across the field. Technology continues to advance in all areas, and it is all these tools working together that will help us increase the quality and the quantity of our harvest. I'm a farmer. I feel very strongly the responsibility we have as farmers to meet the needs of a growing world. And I'm very excited by the new technologies that give us the ability to do that. These are my grandchildren. 
They enjoy a good diet. And we believe that all children around the world should have access to the same quality, nutrition, freshness, and food safety that we take for granted. The great economic progress that is being made in many countries today is bringing that goal within reach. But to achieve that goal, we need production, which is driven by technology and trade, which depends on good policy. As a farmer in the United States, I use those technologies every day, but that alone is not enough. We also need market access and customers with the confidence to trust markets to achieve food security through trade. To share this abundance with the world, we need a constructive partnership, and that is what we hope to promote through Maisel. On our farm, we keep an eye on the future. The next generations, our children and our grandchildren, are leading us there. Sometimes they're pushing us there. I invite you all as leaders to walk into, to live into that desirable future for agriculture of tomorrow. As the forum calls us to join the movement and help us sow a new tomorrow. What will that require of all of us? Will we choose to be like Sisyphus, rolling the same issues up the same hill in the same way and expecting different results? Are we change agents that are just nibbling around the edges of the challenges? Or are we stepping up to the plate to be transformational leaders, both individually and collectively? Creating new possibilities for the future is a higher calling. We can become and be those transformational leaders who in turn transform our places of work and in turn transform the world. We need to commit, align, communicate, be, and develop champions. The future is calling to all of us now. How we answer that call can start us walking into re realizing that desirable future. There's a lot of power and intellect and influence in this room. How do we as leaders be transformational and create the new possibilities for a desirable future? What is it about that future that inspires us so deeply that we can inspire others, our organizations, universities, companies, governments? How do we commit, develop champions, communicate a message so compelling that it captures the hearts and minds of our stakeholders and society in general? What are the possibilities we must lean into and live into in order to get there? There's no easy way, no formula. It is simple, but not easy. We declare our possibilities, our vision with authenticity and integrity. We commit to something bigger than ourselves. We take a stand in our desirable future and begin to fill in those gaps in that empty space which, between what has been and what can be. May the force be with you, with each of you, as you contemplate the possibilities and engage. May the force be with all of us as we commit to do our part on a path to a grand vision, to create a reality that answers the call of the great challenge that is before us in food and agriculture. Thank you. Eu quero 
ao entregar um prêmio a Ben Johnson, dar o meu testemunho. Ben Johnson se apresentou aqui como de uma tradicional família de agricultores lá dos Estados Unidos, do estado de Iowa. E ela disse claramente que ela é uma agricultora. Pois eu gostaria de dizer a vocês que Ben Johnson, além de agricultura, é uma grande líder que tem inspirado os produtores americanos nesta luta que eles estão conseguindo vencer. É uma honra para o nosso Global Forum ter Ben Johnson, esta grande líder, como uma de nossas inspiradoras. Muito obrigado. Thank you, Minister Polinelli. And, and as you all know, July 4th is the birth date of our country, and today my family is home celebrating together as a, as a great tradition. But I also want to say happy birthday to Minister Polinelli this week also and congratulate you. Thank you. Os nossos agradecimentos ao senhor Alisson Paulinelli e à palestrante Pamela Johnson. Muito obrigado.